The Apple logo is the most distinctive feature of a Mac laptop, yet for the last few decades it's only come in white, grey and black. So let's make this MacBook Pro stand out by customising its glowing Apple logo with a custom colour. This modification is possible with just about every Mac laptop from about 2003 to 2015. If it's got a glowing logo, this modification should work. Although anything with a glass screen will be greatly more challenging. So much so, I wouldn't recommend this modification unless you're also replacing the display at the same time. This MacBook Pro, like the Air, has an aluminium bezel, which we can peel off without risking damaging the display. The matte screen with aluminium border was a special order at the time, and explains the lack of a glass screen. We'll begin by opening up the bottom of the laptop so that we can disconnect the battery. We'll also need to access the internals later, so while we didn't have to open the base of the laptop yet, it's always a good practice to disconnect the battery before beginning any work. Now it's time to remove the display's bezel. It's held in with adhesive, so I'll transfer the laptop over to the heat plate, allowing the screen to warm up before attempting to remove the bezel. With the display warm, I'll insert my jimmy tool between the bezel and rubber gasket, gently prying open a gap. To avoid scratching anything, I'll proceed the rest of the way using plastic picks. Unfortunately, given the age and properties of the rubber, it's become very brittle. The initial area where I began has become a bit damaged, but fear not as I can just glue the larger sections back in. I found the best way to remove this bezel without destroying the rubber beside it was to apply slight upward pressure while sliding a plastic card around the edges. This way, I was always hovering above the rubber and not having my tool catch on it. I'll also need to be mindful of the camera whilst undertaking this process. While the aluminium bezel is harder to crack, it's incredibly soft, so it'll be misshapen after it's removed. We'll need to correct this when we reinstall it. Apart from the webcam, the only thing beneath this bezel is a series of magnets that help keep the screen closed when the laptop's lid is shut. Before we proceed, I'll quickly plug the laptop in to verify the display is still working. Now we can remove the LCD panel itself, which proved to be more challenging than first anticipated. After removing all visible screws, I thought the screen would fold forward, allowing me to disconnect its cable. Instead, it appears the screen is not only still attached somewhere, but the display cable is located right at the bottom. Meaning I'll have to remove the whole assembly from the laptop to proceed. Thankfully, this is a simple process, only requiring the removal of 10 screws and three cables. I would recommend opening the display to a 90 degree angle and hanging it over the edge of a table whilst undertaking this, as having the hinges in an open position makes removing the display from the top case easier. Then it's just the process of removing the hinge cover to reveal the display cable and the fact that there's no further screws underneath that are holding the LCD in. So how is this display still attached, you ask? Well, there is more screws, but they're not hiding under the hinge cover because that would have been too easy. They're hidden under the rubber gasket in the lower two corners. I'll need to heat and gently pry up the corner just enough to be able to remove the screws. With the display loose, we can now lift it up and unplug the cable attaching to the bottom. There are three pieces of tape covering this connector. We'll need to carefully peel back each piece with some tweezers to reveal the connector. Then it can be unlatched and the cable unplugged. Under this small diffuser is the Apple logo, but as you can see, it's solid white. But this is merely a backing. The actual logo is clear acrylic. To remove the coloured backing, I'm going to apply some acetone and scrape it away. Acetone can melt certain plastic, so you need to be mindful while doing this, but I found it didn't damage the Apple logo at all, but it certainly softened the white coating. I'm also only going to be using plastic tools to avoid scratching the logo, as this would affect the end result. I'll need to keep adding more acetone as we go, slowly but surely removing all of the white. 
You don't have to be too particular around the edges as long as the visible area is clean. Then you can use your choice of a solid color, cellophane or even a photograph to be able to customize your logo. With cellophane you can vary the number of sheets to provide the desired look. Using more cellophane will darken the logo and allow less light. Although personally I wouldn't use more than two. I'll cut out the approximate size from the sheet and make some finer adjustments so that it'll sit under the diffuser that we'll reattach later. With the cellophane cut to size, I'll get it stuck into place after cleaning any remaining marks and fingerprints off the Apple logo. To attach our color sheet, I'll use nothing more than some good old sticky tape, making sure that it's on the very perimeter and not visible from the other side. Once in place, the diffuser can be reattached. This is also a good time to hammer out any dints in the lid, as you can't do this with the LCD in place. After the panel beading is finished, the LCD can be reinstalled. Making sure to carefully guide the display cable through the frame. Then it's just a matter of fastening all the screws, including the two hidden ones. I'll also take the time to clean the hinge cover before it's installed being sure not to snag the cables or Wi-Fi antenna. Now, the complete display assembly can be reattached to the top case. With one screw loosely attached in both hinges, I can now close the display and align it with the top case. Once aligned, the screws can be tightened and the remaining can now be installed. We'll need to ensure the display cables are correctly routed around the retaining brackets to avoid damaging them when the screen is in operation. While this modification hasn't been too difficult to do, there's still a risk that you could damage the display removing it. For some laptops, a replacement display is worth more than the whole laptop, so be careful if you decide to perform this modification. With the display plugged in, it's time to reattach the battery and get this modified MacBook Pro closed up and ready for a test. And it works! Now all that's left to do is reattach the bezel, which is going to need some work as it's slightly bent out of shape. Despite lifting it out relatively flat, it still managed to curl pretty bad. I tried flattening it a few ways, but I found just bending it back into shape with my hands worked best. With some patience, I got it basically perfect. Now it can be reattached to the laptop. I'd recommend putting some new adhesive on too, just to help hold it in place. The last thing this laptop needs is a good clean, because it's filthy. It's quite amazing how well it came up. A lot of the marks I first thought to be damaged to the casing just turned out to be grime. And we're done. So this is it, a custom glowing Apple logo fitted onto a MacBook Pro. This can be achieved on many other models of Apple computers, including the MacBook Air. This cheap modification can make an older MacBook stand out and look unique. I've also done this modification to another MacBook, creating a purple Apple logo. But with some creativity, you can design your logo into just about anything. And on that note, this has been a Hugh Jeffries video. If you like what you saw, consider subscribing and check out the custom tech playlist for more videos just like this one. And if you're looking for any used devices, be sure to check out my online store, link for which is down in the description. That's all for this video, and I'll catch you guys next time.